by two really key things. Is one is any natural parties that are going to work best for tip, and that's obviously this side. So my sectioning is done. I'm just going to spin, spin around a little bit. You see, um, symmetrical undercuts there. So the first challenge is going to be is to blend that into there and build a shape in the side. So as I said before, we actually want to do a haircut underneath here, which is going to support what we do on top. Although it's going to be undercut and disconnected, we want to make sure that it's not um, shaved and then long, because I just don't think that looks so good. So. So I'm just going through here and building um, my primary design line for the underneath for this haircut. I'm maybe do a bit shorter than that. And then we're going to bring everything underneath it to this point. So some of you might already be asking, well, why didn't I start like this? The reason why I started with horrors, I'm um, sorry, with vertical sections in the back, is because I wanted to, I wanted to gauge how curly it was going to be. You right there, Tiff? Yeah. Just feeling like it rained down on you? <laughs> Cutting this excess length off, then I'm going to get my clippers and we're going to just work clipper over comb and just keep this all nice and tight. So I'm going to do a buzz short um, because we want to still keep it soft and feminine but you can still use clipper over comb without having to go to the scalp and then I'm going to finish it um, scissor over comb.
Oh, it's flicking out there on the back. Yeah. Little flicks on the back too. <laughs> All right, so I've got rid of the length that I don't need. So now what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna dry it off and then I'm gonna finish the underneath entirely. Then we're gonna have about a one centimeter transition line just from here coming into the back, which will diffuse that and then we'll work into the top. See how strong this is in here. So I generally try not to use texturizing scissors like this, and the only time I do is where the hairs like not long enough for me to hold between my fingers and just sort of make sure that you're just really working through the last few millimeters of the hair you don't want to actually thin the hair out and make it look really fine it's just more to create a little bit of separation so the hair sits a little bit flat it's also good for when it grows out you just don't want to go like deep in like this Done. Yeah, spin tip around. The underneath's done. She looks amazing. I'll we'll check it again. You know what I'm like. Um, when I restyle hair like this, one of the things we'll do is once I've finished um, Tiff's hair before um, I go and dry and we finish it, I'll actually take it to the basin, make sure that it's all rinsed out um, because it resets the hair. When you cut the hair wet um, and it goes from long to short, and then you dry it, and when it gets really wet again, sometimes it can actually move around. So. When I do big restyles like this, I always give it a good rinse and then redry it just to make sure I haven't missed any little pieces of hair or um, there's any imbalances, you get the opportunity to fix it. So this is actually going to be a little bit dramatic. Me, there's a method to my madness. Okay, so um, you can see what we're going to have to contend with here, and I suspected it would be the case. There's considerable amount of movement here, so um, good luck, ads. You're going to see how good you really are now. So I've sectioned the front out, just chin up a bit, Tiff. You guys can see that. I've just sectioned the front out there, and it'll be 
that same section as what I had before. What I want to try and do is we just want to use graduation, or actually, it probably actually is layering, just to blend this into the back. So it actually looks like a haircut on top of what we've just done. So we need, again, we need to make sure that this shape is very defined and pronounced. You can see I've over-directed it to the side. You can see the graduation that's there. Maybe over-directed a little bit too much. That's better. crown is super strong as well. It's good. We all need a decent challenge every now and then. Tiff's definitely given me one today. Cross check, always cross check horizontally all your vertical sections, but don't, I almost made a mistake then, don't put too much tension on the hair when there's movement, especially when there's a crown there. Just wanna All right, so just spin Tiff around here. Look at the curl up there. Uh, we're gonna have to texturize that some, like big time, so. I'm gonna spin back around. I'm gonna leave her on the side here so you can see me do this layering on the top. So now we're gonna go into some square layering, but we're over-directing it all to this point because I wanna retain the length in the front. And I did vertical, sorry, I did horizontal sections first, and then I'm cross-checking them vertically. And then we're gonna dry it. Smooth it out the best we can, and then texture, rinse it. Then we're gonna see if we can style it curly and style it straight.
making sure we don't disrupt our design line. I'm going to make sure that we're going directly in to our section of hair horizontally and we're not going across it because if we go across it we're going to actually change the shape and then um, we just undo everything we've done for the last 20 minutes. Where the hair's long there, I'm just going to leave that for now and blend that in on the sides. We just really want to work on getting this back to sit flat and it's already sitting much flatter. And the reason being is when you work horizontally like this and you're cutting into the section of hair, you're actually creating spaces for the other hair to fall into so it's, it can sit flatter. That's why it's not necessary to actually chop across your cutting line. You still want shape in there, you don't want it to be completely flat. So if you have a look at that now compared to how it looked like five seconds ago, it's sitting in there, we've just got to blend this in, that in, take that little corner out when we're done. Right, so what we're going to do now is I want to leave some length here for Tiff to be able to tuck this. But this is going to be our short side because we decided because of her hairline, she's always going to wear it this way. So we want to blend this in, but still want to leave some softness here onto her face so we can tuck it down there if we want to. So what we want to basically do is we want to get rid of the hair that's underneath my fingers there. Cool. Same thing again, we horizontally want to texturize the hair to collapse it so it sits flat. Nice and soft and full. Now we're just going to leave that little bit of length there so we can tuck it so it's out of the way. Maybe we don't need that much. Just spin around this way. Again, we're just very strategically, a little bit at a time, just texturizing this without disrupting our design line so that we can collapse the hair. Just remember when you texturize. And again, we're gonna go horizontally and we're gonna texturize this about centimeters, centimeter section at a time until we're happy with the amount of texture and the amount of weight, we've, the amount of texture we've put in and the amount of weight we've taken out.
texture on the top. Always making sure at no point do we ever cut into our design line because otherwise you change the shape of the haircut. You're not happy with the shape of the haircut, you recut it, you don't texturize it to make it sit well. Might be a bit long there. Not too much. It's a little bit sort of out of balance. This would actually be a good example, guys, of when texturizing actually makes hair shorter. We're going to try and cut your hair on the beach today. I know. Can you imagine trying to do this on the beach? <laughs> Would have been impossible. Especially like, um, I had a look at the photo the book sent to me. I was like, yeah, she's got curly hair. So I was going to pack my blower back. So <laughs> when, I, when I do stuff on location, I use a blower back. You can yeah. actually blow dry hair with a blower back. Especially <laughs> if, it's, if it's warm, you can. Yeah. Like, it takes a while, but you can still do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, can't fit in my bag. I literally tried to pack my blower back, but it wouldn't fit in my bag. <laughs> It's only a mini one, be, so it's a little Makita one. would have been fun. <laughs> Battery operator one, yeah, it's cool. It's a couple of videos on my YouTube channel on the ears and my blow back actually. <laughs> the weather was a bit weird though too. It yeah, looked, it looked like, like it was going to rain. Like it was gonna rain. It looks like it was going to be a big storm actually, not just rain. Probably right, going to give this a little blast. So what do you think? What do you it looks awesome. You look good. I'm going to spin you around so we can see the back. So I ended up managing to almost completely blend this in. Um, there's a little bit of a disconnection there, but nothing major. I uh, just want to show you the couple of different, so we can wear it this way as well. And I was saying to Tiff off camera that this is if she wants to have a more swept look, even if she doesn't sweep it that far or parts it that deep, she can actually have it almost like it's a swept fringe. So again, if you wanted to wear it that way, it's more swept, bit of texture there, but the intention was to always wear it this way because we like it up and off the face because we don't like to hide behind the hair. You can have a little bit of a sweat fringe like that, but it sits more back off the face that way. Looks good. Finish with some texture spray. Want to see some pictures? You're going to have to like DM me. <laughs> some pictures when you wear it curly. I want to see what one day we just scrum some mousse in and some moisturizer. Yeah, thank you so much. It um, was a little bit challenging here in the back, I have to say. I um, Even for me, it was quite difficult because we tend to, we tend to just go and grab some thinning scissors and just start um, hacking away at it. And I know that's a really awful thing to say, but that's what the majority of us would do most of the time. And it takes a lot of discipline and patience to first cut it correctly using graduation, vertical graduation, and then we texturize it horizontally using point cutting. And um, the result is that it doesn't have that, that steel wool, fluffy, frizzy look when we dry it straight. Um, and as you saw already from the previous little snip before I started um, drying it, we just left it wet and you could see that the curl still formed and it looked quite good. So um, I like this way, but you could definitely wear it the other way. I like it this way too. Cool, thanks for it's trusting amazing. me. Thank you for- Big deal.
doing an amazing job. No worries, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, do you have an Instagram? You want to shout out your Instagram? Uh, Tiffany.j with a V instead of an A. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I'll have it scrolling up here on the screen right about now anyway. Um, and make sure you go and follow Brooklyn and Kin. Uh, they're the beautiful uh, people, especially Brooke, who allowed us to use the salon today. I'm um, showing them some support too. And um, until next time, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. You're very <laughs> brave, but I think it's fair to say it was worth it. <laughs> it was so worth See it. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.